The subject that we will be studying is about the end times because I believe we are now entering into that time when Jesus said he will come back. And when you study scriptures, especially the Old Testament, Daniel, where God revealed to Daniel the things that will happen throughout the ages, he gave him a very good idea of what will happen. And anybody who studies these scriptures gets to understand how God operated during the last couple of centuries. And I will try and explain to you today in a way that the ordinary person can understand. And before we get into this message, we will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, and we pray, Lord, that the power of your Spirit will rest upon this message, so that people will understand, for our Father, this is not a fairy tale. You have written it, and it will come to pass. So you will help me to explain it, O God, so that people will be able to understand it, and realize that the time that we are now living in are the times that you claim that you will come back. So, Father, I thank you for it today, and I ask you to bless this message today in Jesus' name. Amen. We will go back to Daniel chapter 2, and we realize who Daniel was. Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were, three, were four prisoners that were taken captive at the destruction of Jerusalem when King Nebuchadnezzar came in with the Chaldeans and destroyed the temple. And we know that was prophesied by Jeremiah, and we know it was fulfilled when the Jews stood in disbelief as the temple burned to the ground. And that is where Daniel and his three friends were taken captive. And they ended up in Nebuchadnezzar's court and became one, uh, three, four of his wise men. And the story can be read in Daniel chapter 1. But I want you to take to you to Daniel chapter 2 where King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he said to the Chaldeans, the astrologers, the astronomers, the soothsayers that were his wise men, he said to them, I had a dream, but I forgot the dream, and you will tell me what it is. And the, the wise men said to him, There is no man that can tell, interpret a dream unless you tell what you dreamt. And King Nebuchadnezzar said, If you don't tell me what I dreamt, then I will kill all of you. I will read you a scripture out of Second Daniel, chapter, uh, verse 5. It says, The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. That he's talking about this dream here. And if you will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, you will be cut in pieces, and your houses will be made a dunghill. So you had to be very brave to be one of the king's advisors, or very greedy, one of the two. But here was the decree that King Nebuchadnezzar put out, if you do not, come up with the dream and the interpretation, you will be torn to pieces. And we have to remember that Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were uh, the, the, one of the wise men that were in the king's court. So finally, Daniel, when Daniel heard about it, he said to the king, and he told him, give me time, I will ask the God of heaven what the, this dream means and what you have dreamt and he gave him the time so they went and prayed before the Lord and the Lord revealed to Daniel the dream and the king tried to tell him that he was a wise man but Daniel denied it he said I am no more wise than anybody else but for the sake of all of us God revealed it to us what the dream is. And I want to read you about the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. The dream definitely described the events that would follow King Nebuchadnezzar on down to the end of the age. 
And this is very good reading for some of you Bible scholars who want to, to try and get to know what God is trying to tell us. I advise you to study these scriptures. Daniel chapter 2, 31 it says, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image with brightness was excellent and stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and arms were of silver, his belly and his thighs were of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. We will notice here that the stone that came out from heaven smote the image on the feet which were the feet were iron and clay mixed together it did not destroy the image by hitting it on its head it destroyed the image by hitting it on the feet indicating what this what these scriptures mean and the interpretation will explain why the stone hit the image on the feet and destroyed the whole thing it is very interesting when you start to study these things. In verse 39 it says, After you there shall arise another kingdom, that is Daniel talking to King Nebuchadnezzar, inferior to thee, and a third kingdom of brass which shall rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdued all things, and as much as iron breaketh all things, shall it break in pieces and bruises. So he says, after you there shall come another three kingdoms. So the first kingdom was Nebuchadnezzar, which the head, which was gold. The second kingdom, the chest, which was silver, which were the Medes and the Persians, and then the belly, which was the the belly and the thighs which were which were of brass this was alexander the great with the greeks that came after and that came in and destroyed the medes and the persians and then came the roman empire which are the feet of iron which ruled the entire world with an iron grip and after the roman empire comes the last kingdoms which are iron and clay mixed together and this is what we are seeing today the kingdoms of the earth are strong but there are some kingdoms that are weak even they even though they mingle together the united nations they get together and try to come to an agreement but they never seem to come to no agreement because the bible teaches they will not mix together and the time will come when the antichrist will rule those ten kingdoms those kingdoms that are very strong and then war will break out upon the earth and the bible teaches when those feet which are of iron and clay mixed together will rule then the lord jesus himself will come and destroy all those kingdoms this is why it describes the great stone coming down from heaven and hitting the image on the feet because it indicates the great stone which is Jesus Christ will come down from heaven and destroy the last kingdom, the feet 
which are now in existence, the kingdoms that do not mix together, the iron and the clay. And we are now in that time and period when the iron and the clay are ruling. We have the Americans, we have Russia, we have the Canadians, we have Britain, we have all those kingdoms all ruling. But none of them can come to any agreement. And the time will come when the great Antichrist will come and try to unite them together. But the Bible describes there is going to be such a terrible time of warfare during that time when he will try and bring all the kingdoms into his domain that this planet will be filled with such a war that people and that human beings could never imagine and could never uh, see, have never seen before. So we are now at that time when Jesus is, is saying that the Antichrist will appear, when those nations who are re ruling now will come, become one and try to, to rule the world. But that is when Jesus will come back. And when he comes back, he will destroy all those that are ruling. And then he will set up his kingdom here on earth. That is when the millennium kingdom will start. A thousand years of peace. He will set it up and he will reign from Jerusalem. The people who have accepted the mark of the beast will all be killed and thrown into hell. And those who have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, whether they died or whether they were raptured, they will be here to reign with Jesus a thousand years. And those who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who made it through the tribulation, they will be separated from those who did not believe. And then they will enter into the millennium kingdom, the thousand years of reign, of peace, and will start to repopulate the planet again. Because most of the people will be killed during the terrible tribulation period. And we will be studying the, the millennium next week. So just... Uh, tune in next week because I believe there's not too many people that know that what time is waiting for those here in the next maybe 20 years when these all those things will be fulfilled. So the Lord will reveal to us, has revealed to us through his book, even by studying the book of Daniel, which were written 4,000 years ago, the time of the end. Daniel the prophet, when he saw those incredible things, it says, it says in Daniel chapter 8, verse 27, And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterwards I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. We are starting now to understand what Daniel saw in his vision. It troubled him so much that he fainted and was sick. So we know that there's terrible times coming upon this planet. But after those terrible times, there's going to come a thousand years of peace, which this world has never seen before. And it is waiting for them who love the Lord Jesus Christ, who give their hearts to Him. They will have tranquility and joy and peace. And God is getting ready to set up that kingdom. We still have to wait for a few things to be fulfilled. The Antichrist has to come on the scene. The rapture has to take place. But the Bible teaches when you see wars and rumors of wars, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, then lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth now nigh. And I believe we are now at the very threshold when Jesus is going to split the skies and call his loved ones to himself. So I'm asking you today, are you ready for that great day of the trumpet when Jesus will call us home 
to himself. J receive him by faith today, for you do not have to go through the terrible tribulation. You can be in heaven with them that love Jesus. Ask him by faith to come into your heart, repent from your evil deeds, and the Lord Jesus will take you in. And until next time, the Lord will richly bless you and give you great understanding of the things that co are coming to pass. Amen. When you study the scriptures, especially in Proverbs, it teaches you in there that a person who studies the scriptures will gain wisdom. And when a person studies the scriptures, what is the beginning and the end of a human being? The revelation of this incredible book brings to you an understanding. And when you look upon the world scene, especially when you sometimes watch television, and what happens to the movie stars, the millionaires, how much money they spend on things that have absolutely no value when it comes to eternal life. You look at them in, a, in amazement that people could be so foolish to spend all their life spending their life on total useless stuff whereas their eternal life is waiting for them and they could not care less. And when we study the scriptures, we start to realize the value of a human soul. The Bible teaches what does it gain a person if, it, if he wins the whole, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the end. And this is the question that often pops into my mind. When I especially study and teach on the end times, the end times are here. Human beings are not going to be around as we see a world government today. Things are going to change drastically. And even if we manage to live for another 20 or 30 or 40 years, we all have to die. And then after that there is a judgment. And what we have sowed, we shall reap in the end. So I'm asking you today, you the listener out there, what are you doing with your life? What will be the end payment when the master of the universe will bring you before for the judgment. What will be your payment? Will you reap eternal life or will you get eternal damnation? I have a feeling there's far too many people who do not really care what will happen. They live on as if it's going to continue. But the Bible teaches this is going to come to a stop. I'm asking the Christian today, what are we doing with the time that God has given to us? What are we doing with the money that God is entrusting to us? Are we like those Hollywood movie stars just building our own little kingdoms only at a smaller scale or are we furthering the kingdom of God? The Bible teaches in 2 Peter chapter 3, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And it says here, we should look for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord. We should hasten towards that day where we will meet Jesus. Well, what are we doing with our time, with our ener energies? What is our goal in this life? Are we looking forward to please the master of the universe or are we living for ourselves? What, uh, whatever anybody will sow, 
that he will also reap. I believe this is for everybody to look through his own heart because in the end we will stand and we will have no excuse. Let us not be foolish. Let's use our time that God give us for the Lord's kingdom where he will reward us in the end and that reward will last throughout eternity and not being burned off with the chaff which will come which with the fire that will come to try all the things that are on this planet. So I'm asking you dear precious Christian today are you really serious with God or are you just mediocre? Get in line, get in tune with the Holy Spirit and let Him direct you in this walk. For the time is short. We do not know when Jesus will come back. Until next time, the Lord richly bless you and bring you to an understanding of His Word like you have never known before. Amen.